Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Liam Douglas coming at you from Roxboro, North Carolina. And in this video, I'm going to be looking at a new photography plugin called Dehancer. And we'll be doing most of that work on the computer. But before we get started, please remember to check out the Liam Photography Podcast. You can find it anywhere that podcasts are found. I have a massive back catalog of episodes with over 334 five at this time I believe uh, that you can go back to uh, go back and listen to at your leisure. Now in today's video like I said I'm going to be talking about Dehancer's film simulation plugins for Lightroom, Photoshop and Capture One. Now if you've been following me for any amount of time you know I switched a few years ago from Lightroom and Photoshop to using Capture One exclusively because I shoot Fujifilm cameras and in my opinion Capture One just works better at handling Fujifilm RAW files. And you know I love using the Fujifilm built-in film simulations but this new plugin allows me to have some additional film simulations that I don't have baked into my Fujifilm cameras. So we're going to go inside of the computer and take Take a look at these now and see what kind of results we can get and then we'll wrap up this video on my Mac and I'm at the company's website which is dehancer.com and I do have an affiliate uh, code that I'll put in the description for this video it's LD photo which will get you 10% off on your purchase and the the plugin that I'm reviewing is called dehancer film it's available for Photoshop Lightroom capture one uh, Affinity Photo, Apple Photo, uh, Apple Photos. The software is compatible with both Mac and Windows machines, and they do also have a plugin for DaVinci Resolve. Now, the plugin can be used for both still photos as well as video, which is really cool. And like I mentioned at the opening of this video, if you follow this channel or you follow my podcast, you know that I absolutely love my Fujifilm cameras with their baked-in film simulations that emulate their 35 millimeter film stock. Now this plugin gives me additional uh, photo profiles, film profiles that I can use with my photos. So let's take a look here. I am using Capture One and I have some sample images that I've shot in the last couple of weeks. Uh, this one is a street portrait that I shot with the X100V when I had that on loan from Fujifilm. Um, so we're going to go ahead and let's see here. We'll select the image and, oh, there we go. Let me get my pointer. And then we're going to do edit with other. And let me see if I can find the application here. I thought it would just pull it right up, but it didn't. So let's go down here and find it. Dehancer plugin. All right. And open. And you got the option, you can save them as a TIFF file when you're done, or JPEG, or DNG, PNG, or Photoshop file. So you can use any of those file formats. You can modify the resolution, you can modify the ICC profile, um, compressed or zipped, uncompressed or zipped, I apologize. Um, you can modify the crop, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and open up a variant of this image in the plugin and here's the plugin as you can see here and let me make this screen bigger so it's a little bit easier for you to see what's going on okay so now you see on the left hand side I have various 35 millimeter film profiles that I can apply to this image so we have ADOX color uh, that makes it more grainy uh, and old school we have AGFA color 100 which looks pretty good with this image. And I'm just going to go through a bunch of these so you can see what they look like. And we have this one here, uh, which is a green normal. And we have Fuji Eterna Vivid, which is a really nice one. I really like that one. We have Fuji Eterna uh, Vivid 500. Um, let's see. And it has 3513 at the end. The previous one was 2383. And we have Fuji Rella. 500D, which is one that I really, really like. I use that one quite a bit. Uh, we have Fuji Chrome Velvia 100, Fuji Chrome Velvia 50. Uh, we have Instax. We have Ilford XP2 Super 400 film. Uh, we even have some Kodak film simulations here. 
which are pretty cool. I like some of these. They have some really good looks to them. And as you can see, you can apply, you can see the changes to the image as I highlight each one. So you can preview them before you actually apply them and save the image. So that one there is a Kodak Porta 400 Endura, which is pretty nice. I kind of like that one there. That one looks pretty good. We have Kodak Vision 3. We have Loma Chrome Metropolis XR 100-400. And as you can see, there are quite a few film profiles that you can apply to your images. They even have a Polaroid one here that's pretty cool. And then, of course, we have some uh, older black and white film stocks as well, um, which can create some really cool images. Now, this one right here looks pretty good. Um, it says it's an experimental one, but I kind of like that one. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and apply that one. And there are adjustments on the right hand side. I'll open the window again here in a minute so you can see it. And see here's the finished image as a TIFF. So here's the original and here's the finished image as a TIFF file. Now I have this one here of a food truck that I shot recently when my wife Tina and I were up in Elmira, New York visiting our kids and grandkids. So let me take this one and we're going to edit this one with Dehancer Lightroom plugin. Um, even though I'm using Capture One, it's still called the Lightroom plugin because it works with both programs, which is really cool. It saves you some hassle there. Um, and when you download it, it has instruction files that tell you how to install it on, uh, and as a plugin for various softwares. Um, so if I go down through these, let me see here. I want to find one that I really like. The Fujifilm Eterna Vivid, Relia. It's got quite a bit of grain in it with these, so let's find one that's not so grainy, because I don't want too much grain in the image. Uh, there we go. This one's not bad. Kodak Porta 400 Plus Endura. And then, like I said, over here on the right-hand side, you can adjust exposure compensation, your temperature, uh, your tint. You have defringe, defringe radius. Um, you have film developer that you can turn on and you can do a contrast boost, gamma correction, color separation, and color boost. And then, of course, you have film compression. So you can do impact, white point, total range, and color density. Um, let's see what happens when I modify the color density. So you can see the change as I move the slider. And the sliders move really smooth. They work very well. No issues at all, and then you can just double-click the slider to go back to its default position. And there are additional uh, controls down this right-hand side. Um, you have print controls, um, you have color head controls, and you also have controls over the film grain. You can choose the size of the grain, the amount, uh, the resolution. You can apply it to the shadows, mid-tones, highlights, and the overall color. And you also have halation, and we have bloom, and you can see there's a lot of control to this. You can even add custom vignetting to your image if you wanted to. And then, of course, at the top, you have your live preview, and you can turn that on and off. So here's the before image, and here it is with the current film profile that I have applied. Now, this is some really cool software. I, I really love it. I've been playing around with it for about a week now, and been thoroughly enjoying it. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, the, the company reached out to me and asked me if I'd be interested in trying out their software and doing a review on it. This is not a paid video. It's not a sponsored video for full transparency. I'm just letting you know. They gave me a trial license just so I could try it out and do a YouTube video about it, talk about it, and get the word out about this really cool uh, film profile plugin for your photo editing software, whether you're using Lightroom, Photoshop, Affinity Photo, Capture One, it works with all of them. And so as you can see here, if I go back to the Fuji Eterna Vivid, um, it's a little bit grainy, a little bit more grainy than I would like. So let's go down here and we'll activate the film grain and see I can adjust the grain, I can add more, I can take some of it back out. I can you know, set the size at a minimum of 1 all the way up to a maximum of 12. And then you can apply 
uh, more or less grain depending on what your needs are, what the aesthetic is that you're going for. Um, you can adjust the resolution for the grain and all of that. Um, and then, of course, like I said earlier, apply it to the shadows, midtones, highlights, and the overall color. And then you have film type, positive or negative, that you can select from. And then you have analog or digital, which the digital is experimental. Um, but it is really, it is really awesome software. I really do like it a lot. I think the Dehancer team has done a really good job with this film profile plugin. I think it's very cool. It's definitely worth checking out um, and seeing what film stocks, what film profiles you like to apply to your own images. So again, here's the before and here's the after. And I think that looks really cool. You can see it's got a little bit of film grain to it. Um, but I like it because you have to remember, I started photography in the late 70s and uh, all through the tail end of the 70s, all through the 80s and 90s, I was shooting film. I shot a lot of film, a lot of different types of film stock and a lot of different types of photography, motorsports, portraits, family photos. I've shot some weddings over the years, mostly just for friends and family. Um, I don't do weddings professionally just because it's a lot of stress. Now let me grab another image here that I want to show you. So this is the Kirby Theater in what's called Uptown Roxborough. And I went there, I went to Uptown Roxborough last weekend to do a street photo shoot for another YouTube video. And I'll put the link to that in the description below if you want to check that one out. Or maybe I'll put it as the end card at the end of this video. Uh, but I went down there. Um, and I was planning on doing street photography with my new X-Pro3 with the 23mm F2 Fujifilm lens, which is a fantastic combination. And I just love this old Kirby Theater building. So let me grab this one and let's see what we can do with the Hanser uh, film profiles with this shot here. Because um, I think we could probably make this look a little more old school with the cool film stocks that they have that you can apply to your images. So let's see. Let me see if I can find one I really like. Let's see here. Now, uh, that one looks pretty good. But let me go back. Let's try. Maybe we'll try a monochrome one this time. How about this one here? Uh, no. Yeah, that one looks a little bit better. Now, I like this one. So this is the Roly Ortho 25. Um, and in my opinion, this is a good film profile to use for this exterior shot of the Kirby Theater in Uptown Roxborough. So we're going to leave it just as it is. I'm not going to mess with the sliders at all because I like the look that I got. So we're going to go ahead and save it. And then we have the original here and we have the modified version here. And I think that looks very, very nice. Now to clean it up a little bit, I got the nose of this pickup truck that was parked there in the frame. So let's get rid of that. Let's bring a crop in just, whoops, let me see here. Let me bring the crop in just a little. The only problem is I don't want to cut off that Piedmont Community College sign. So I can only crop it so much. Um, let's see if maybe we can, uh, let's see if maybe we can get rid of the truck. I don't know if we can successfully or not. I know this would probably be a little bit easier in Adobe software with their content aware fill. Um, I'm not sure how well it's going to work on this one. We'll let it process here for a minute um, and see what we get. No, nope, that didn't work. Okay. That's fine. I can always play around with it a little bit later. I don't want to waste too much time uh, on this video messing with cropping out the nose of that truck uh, because this video is about the Dehancer uh, film profile plug-in for your editing workflow. Now let's see. Let me find uh, maybe another one we can look at here. Um, they were having a food truck rodeo last weekend when I went there to do some street photography so let me see let me see if i can find one of the cool food trucks um oh here we go here's a shot now this isn't a food truck but here's a shot of a guy that was sitting on one of the benches um texting on his phone so let's do let's do a variant of this photo and see what we can make see what we can come up with 
and again let me enlarge this window so you can see it better in the video there we go and let's see let's try a turn of vivid now i don't like the looks of that the rally of 500 looks decent but I'm trying to see oh there we go that's kind of really cool that's the kodak um ektar 25 uh and it simulates kodak endura paper and i kind of like that look this looks um old school like this was shot maybe in the 70s or early 80s so that's the look that it gave us and i kind of like that i think it looks pretty cool so here's the original and then of course here is the edited version uh, with that kodak film profile applied to it now let me grab like i said i want to grab one of the cool food trucks um let's see this one now let me go back down here. There was one there that had been all over the place. It was like a, a lobster food truck. And it's been featured on a bunch of TV programs like Good Morning America and stuff like that. They were at this food truck rodeo in Roxborough. So let me just, uh, let me see. Is this the one I was looking for? Yeah, there we go. Um, and you can see some of the people. Uh, we got folks over here that are just chatting. And we have this guy waiting in line and this woman and children being waited on by the lady at the window. Uh, so this is a really nice shot. Let's go ahead and edit this one and dehancer and see what we can get. So we load it up here, and again, let me expand the window so you can see it better. There we go. That's much better. Okay, so now let's take a look at some of these film stocks to use with this particular image. Here's the original, and now I'm going to try to find one that I really like. Uh, let's see. Let's go. Let's try the Relia. Eh, it's a little bit too dark. Uh, the Eterna Vivid still, eh. I just, I don't know, it just doesn't look right to me. No, that's way off. Uh, there's the Fujifilm Instax. Now, that doesn't look too bad. Um, we have the Kodak Ektar 25. That looks pretty decent. I don't mind that one at all without the Endura paper. Uh, let's try Kodak Kodachrome 64. Oh, yeah, that actually looks pretty nice. I like that. It's a little bit, you know, the truck's a bit dark, but it's supposed to be dark. Now, the girl's face is kind of hidden now because of the fact that we went with a darker selection. So we can bring up the exposure just a little bit um, so that you can see her a little bit better. And I want to see if there's something else here that I can apply that might help. Now I don't see anything here. But again, uh, you can just make her out, and I can tweak this a little bit back in Capture One if I want to, but I kind of like the look I got with that film simulation. Now, the other possibility is, let's see, we got Polaroid, Polychrome 35. Eh, I don't like the green tint to that. Um, we could go black and white. Uh, that one, I don't know, I think that one's got a little bit too much grain to it. This one looks smoother. So yeah, this one would work right here. The Rolly Ortho 25 uh, does look pretty good for that image. So we could do that in that black and white film profile. And that actually looks really nice. I actually do like that. Now, the background's a little bit blown out because the sun was really bright. And we can mess with that using the sliders in Capture One. Um, we can do some editing to alter that a bit and bring down the brightness of the background, or I could just crop the image a bit um, if I wanted to. Either one would work. But as you can see, the uh, this software is extremely handy. It gives you a lot of film stocks that you don't already have, more than likely don't have, uh, if you're not shooting Fuji, then you don't have film simulations at all. Um, if you are shooting Fuji film like I am, I have all Fuji film X and GFX gear now. Um, for the last year or so, I've been shooting strictly Fuji film. Um, th now this here, let's play with this one a little bit. This is a shot of my 2004 Vulcan 800 classic motorcycle, and I parked it at the corner of Buck Street Road, which is just up the road from my house. So let's see if we can find one that we like. Now, that one's too dark. Let's see if I can find one that I like. Now, still too dark. Too dark, too dark. Let's see here. Nah, still a little bit too dark.
Yeah, see, these are getting a little... There we go. That one doesn't look too bad there. So that one, I like. That makes that shot look really interesting. And here's the original again. And then here's the modified version. So that film profile looks really good for this shot of my motorcycle. It makes it look like it's an old school film photograph that was done on 35 millimeter film stock, which is the whole idea of this plugin. So you can get extremely creative with this plugin. As I mentioned earlier, it is also available to use and apply these film profiles to your video, which is really cool. Um, I don't do any messing around with my videos that I shoot for my YouTube channel. I don't apply any film simulations or anything like that to them. I just leave them stock as they come out of the camera. Um, so I don't mess around with that a whole lot. But this plugin is extremely cool for Lightroom um, and, or Capture One, which is what I'm using, and I really like it. And I think it gives you a very large selection of old school 35 millimeter film profiles that you can check out, um, play around with, apply them to your images, see which ones you like, which ones you don't like, and just have a lot of fun with it. Now, I'm also going to include at the tail end of this video uh, a screen share video from my iPad because the plugin is also available for iOS. You can use it on your iPhone or iPad and have the film profiles uh, mobile with you on those devices as well so you could use them out in the field easily without having to lug your laptop with you if you don't want to if you're on location doing a shoot so I'll include a little bit of video uh, screen video from my iPad Pro so that you can see how well that plug-in um, that app works on the iOS devices okay so here we have the Dehancer app for iOS on my iPad and I opened up this photo of a couple of the roses in our front yard that I captured yesterday and you can see I have the exact access to the exact same film profiles in the iOS app that I have in the desktop plugin so I can apply all the same film simulations here I chose Kodak Kodachrome 64 to apply to the roses and then I can export them to my iCloud desktop so that it's saved there and uh, you know, and then I get the finished image, which I can show you. Let me see here if it's synced over. I don't know if it has yet or not. I don't think it has. Um, and then I went back and chose the photograph of my Vulcan 800 Classic. Here's the one of the Vulcan that I exported already. Um, but here you can see where I, I chose the Loma Chrome one uh, plug-in. And then I went ahead and saved that to my iCloud desktop as well so that I would have that to look at. Now, I'm not sure why my sync is a little bit behind, so the one with the rose didn't show up on my desktop yet, but the one of the motorcycle did, and you can see that right here. Uh, well, actually, no, this is the old one that was already on my desktop, so it doesn't look like either one of them sync, uh, did a sync over from iCloud yet. It sometimes takes a few minutes because I don't have the fastest internet here. Um, so it's just something you got to live with. But as you can see, you have the exact same capabilities with the iOS app that you have with the desktop plugin. All right, so wrapping up this review, as you can see for yourself, the Dehancer team have a lot of fantastic film simulation profiles that emulate a lot of the classic 35 millimeter film stocks that I used back in the day when I shot film. And like I said, if you use the discount code, which you can find in the description of this video, you can get 10% off your purchase. You can use the plugin for both stills photography as well as your videos using DaVinci Resolve, as I showed you um, earlier in this video. So please remember to subscribe to this channel, watch the videos, like them, comment on them, share them out on social media, and hit the little bell icon so you can be notified when new videos release. And I will see you all in the next one.